So we look ahead to tomorrow night's big Republican primary debate in South Carolina, presented by CBS News and the National Journal. Now, one of the key issues for all voters in this campaign is job creation. While South Carolina has worked hard to attract new business, some people there say the Obama administration's policies are standing in their way. And political correspondent Jan Crawford is back with us at the debate site in Spartanburg, South Carolina, with more. Good morning, Jan. Well, good morning again, guys. Uh, when this Dreamliner factory that's built by the aerospace giant Boeing goes into full production, it's estimated that about 11,000 new jobs will be created both at the factory and at some spinoff businesses. But if a ruling by the National Labor Relations Board to move this plant goes into effect, many of those people won't be working at all. You're very welcome. Enjoy it, dear. It's lunchtime at Big Billy's Hamburger Joint in North Charleston, South Carolina. Opened just three months ago, the locally owned restaurant owes its success to Boeing, whose new Dreamliner plant is less than a mile away. When they opened, I saw an immediate increase in business as a result. You could see it across the board. Manager Stephanie O'Rourke estimates that as much as 20 percent of her business comes from the plant's 1,000 new employees, a number that is expected to increase fourfold when the plant starts churning turning out airplanes next year. They're always in their shirts. It has the Dreamliner logo on the, the side of the shirt. But O'Rourke's dream and that of tens of thousands of others here might be short lived. A pro-union ruling by the National Labor Relations Board could force the aerospace company to shut the massive plant and leave town. The ruling has angered state lawmakers. Not only are they, they putting jobs in jeopardy in South Carolina, but they're putting jobs in jeopardy across America at a time when we, meet, we need jobs desperately. According to union representatives, those jobs already exist in Washington state and the company shouldn't be allowed to move them. The problem is that those jobs will be taken out of uh, Everett, Washington, and those employees need those jobs too. The ruling also says Boeing can't move the Dreamliner factory from Washington to South Carolina because South Carolina has laws that make unions more difficult to form. Chip Limehouse believes South Carolina laws are helping the state attract business. South Carolina has got the right idea. We just need President Obama and the NLRB to get off our backs so we can do business. A Republican-sponsored bill to stop the NLRB ruling passed in the House and is now before the Senate for workers like O'Rourke keeping jobs in South Carolina, where the unemployment rate stands at 11 percent, is at the top of everyone's mind. Definite loss of jobs. That's the, probably the biggest fear uh, if anybody's going to talk about anything. Now, as you can imagine, job creation is, of course, really important to voters in South Carolina, like it is to voters across the country. Polls show the economy is the most important issue for voters, and a majority of voters don't approve of how President Obama is handling the economy. This issue, Republicans believe, is a very good one for them. Chris and Rebecca. Great, Jan, a good piece there. I want to ask you quickly about the debate tomorrow night. Uh, we spoke with Newt Gingrich, the former speaker, uh, earlier in the broadcast and talk about his rising poll numbers uh, by virtue of our CBS New York Times poll that's out this morning. This debate, which is primarily focused on foreign policy, how could this debate help Newt Gingrich? Well, I mean, in his interview with you, Chris, I think he set a very high bar for him for himself. He said, this is not a governor's debate. It's a president's debate. And then he emphasized his experience dealing with these foreign policy issues when he was Speaker of the House. So I think he expects going in this debate to really own it. And I suspect, based on his past performances and his command of the issues, that he will do very well tomorrow night. Voters so far have really liked Newt Gingrich in these debates. And tomorrow night is a big opportunity for him to continue building on the support that our poll shows continues to grow. Jan, how about Perry? Because coming into this debate, he's already uh, really undermined himself. The polls show it, as did his performance on Wednesday night. Foreign policy is not his strong suit. Is there concern among his campaign over him faltering again tomorrow night? Well, I mean, talk about the flip side to Newt Gingrich. I mean, I think Perry has set not the high bar, but a low bar. They've got expectations pretty low for him. And based on that performance Wednesday night, it's pretty hard to see how he could do much worse tomorrow night. So tomorrow night, people are not expecting a lot from Rick Perry. So he's really got nowhere to go but up. But as you said, Rebecca, foreign policy, not his strong suit. So it could be a real challenge for him. And the problem also for him is that voters are starting to make up their minds. When they see him in these debates, they're not confident we're hearing on what, what he's saying. So uh, tomorrow night, I think, could also be a, a challenge in that regard. Well, we will look forward to it. CBS's Jan Crawford in Spartanburg, South Carolina's for us this morning. Jan, thank you.